Ready to go on a rainbow roller coaster? Lisa Frank makes the coolest stickers. I should know because I have most of them. Lisa Frank's aesthetic is what 90s dreams are made of, but behind her wild prints and adorable animal characters are tales of genius and drama. And at the center of it all is Lisa Frank herself. I took a deep dive in these rainbow colored waters and let me tell you, the behind the scenes story is dark but there's a rainbow at the end. So let's dive in together, shall we? Lisa Frank founded Lisa Frank Inc. in 1979 when she was just 24 years old. She got the rights for Betty Boop, Popeye, and Mighty Mouse, and later that year, she received her first million dollar order from Spencer Gifts. Over the next 10 years, she moved the company from a small guest house to a 320,000 square foot factory in Tucson, Arizona. At its peak popularity, the company brought in $60 million a year. Lisa Frank's Trapper Keepers folders, stickers, they were an obsession for many kids like my sister in the 90s. Now the trouble began in 1995 when Lisa Frank's husband, James Green, took over the day-to-day -day management duties at the company. James had been at the company since 1982 and was the company's first in-house illustrator and designer. To the couple, it made sense for him to take over the daily business. Lisa had just had her baby, so you know she wanted to spend time with her son, and plus she preferred focusing more on product development and design rather than the mundane day-to-day -day operations. As a president and CEO, Green ran the show, and over the next 10 years, he ran the company into the ground. According to a 2013 Jezebel article about the Lisa Frank Company, James Green created a hostile and toxic work environment. Former employees shared horrible stories of him verbally abusing staff, throwing chairs and other objects in fits of rage, secretly and illegally recording employees' phone calls. And after someone left work 10 minutes early, Green ordered the warehouse manager to put chains and padlocks on all the doors so that no one could leave early again. Oh, but there's more. According to court documents, James Green and his vice president, Rhonda Rowlett, created an atmosphere of fear and intimidation. Rhonda Rowlett had been with the company since 1984, but once Green took over as Tyrant CEO, Rowlett became his enforcer. As one former employee put it, she was the Darth Vader to Green's emperor. But this is the part of the story that is as wild as a Lisa Frank design. Rumors began to circulate that the higher-ups were using and abusing white Coca-Cola stuff during office hours. One former employee shared that James would send someone with a paper bag to go meet a stranger at a gas station. Here you go. And then they would exchange paper bags and the employee was told not to look inside the bag. I think you can figure out what that was. Another employee described James as super sweaty and super paranoid and that Rhonda would come to work sometimes so inebriated that she actually couldn't stand. If these are the two people running your company, I think we can see where this is headed. On any given day, he can be found anywhere in the headquarters, sketching here, projecting earnings there, overseeing artists or the production crew. I spend a lot of time focused on the business. I know where my priorities lay. The reason so many of us are fascinated with this behind the scenes drama from Lisa Frank is that it's such a contrast from her whimsical designs that were originally made for kids. During the 10 years that Lisa Frank's husband, James Green, was in charge, the high turnover in staff and whispers of abuse had given Lisa Frank Inc. a notorious reputation in Tucson, Arizona. In fact, it was known to locals as the company you don't want to work for. Unsurprisingly, James Green's bad behavior also affected their business relationships. Lisa Frank herself had had a great relationship with Target and her products sold well in their stores. But when James Green took over and became increasingly argumentative with the buyers, Target terminated his contract with Lisa Frank Inc. By 2003, Lisa Frank herself began to realize two things. Number one, her husband was having an affair with the company's vice president, Rhonda Rowlett. And number two, she had to get back her company and get rid of James. She confided in a friend that she was frightened of James and was tired of enduring his verbal abuse. And she also admitted that she knew that James had been extremely disrespectful to their employees and managed the company through fear and intimidation. In 2004, Lisa Frank got more involved in the day-to-day -day operations of her business. She started going into the office and making her presence known. And as you can imagine, James Green knew his days as CEO and husband were numbered. So he and Rhonda decided that they were going to start effing with the company. For example, Rhonda didn't pay the premium for Lisa Frank Inc.'s health insurance, which resulted in the cancellation of the plan for everyone at the company. Rhonda wrote checks for herself to be compensated for 
who knows what. And Rhonda and James signed a $20,000 payroll check to the University of Arizona Foundation just so that they could get basketball tickets. Finally, in June of 2005, James Green moved out of the family home. For years, employees knew that their office phones had been bugged at James's request, but James later claimed that Lisa did the same thing when she hired an IT consultant to provide her with direct access to all the company's emails. But maybe it was because she was trying to spy on James and Rhonda, you know? I mean, whatever. The drama continued in October of 2005 when James and Rhonda took five truckloads of property from the Lisa Frank offices. They stole six computers, computer files, records, and confidential papers. That same month, Lisa Frank filed a restraining order against her former husband, ordering him to stay away from her business, stealing company property, and stop harassing employees. For the next eight years, Lisa Frank's time and energy was spent dealing with lawsuits between James, Rhonda Rowlett, and even Rhonda's husband, Jerry. Does it surprise us that Rhonda was actually married this whole time, that all this stuff was going on? No. I don't think I ever want to be a manufacturer again. That takes away from who I am, and what I really love to do is to do artwork. After years of being bogged down with lawsuits, in 2012, Lisa Frank sought the refuge with the hipsters. Yes, she partnered with Urban Outfitters and sold t-shirts she designed exclusively for the retailer. Frank also sold stationary items from her personal secret stash. Since then, Frank has partnered with Crocs, Pillsbury, and even Target again. As for James, he's creating artwork that looks eerily inspired by his ex-wife's designs. James also converted to Christianity and has a new brand that he started with, Rhonda Rowlett, his new wife, Carol Laura Green, and his firstborn son, Hunter. And as for Lisa? Now, when doing my research, I saw that people do not see Lisa Frank as all unicorns and cuddly cubs. According to many comments that I saw on Reddit and blog posts, some people really don't like her. Some of these comments came from former employees or just people who had casual interactions with her in Tucson. But the issue is because her business, Lisa Frank, is named after her, there does seem to be a blurring of the lines between how people view the business or the woman behind it. But other commenters who met or worked with Lisa Frank said she was pleasant and a devoted and cool mom. According to Ronnie Coots, who was head designer at Lisa Frank Inc. from 1987 to 2002, she said that Lisa, quote, radiates creativity along with extreme business savvy. She was one sharp and colorful cookie. So is Lisa Frank more like Padme or Anakin Skywalker? I don't know, but Lisa's son, no, not that one. This one is Luke Skywalker in the scenario. From the time he was six years old, Forrest Green sat in on Lisa Frank company meetings. When he was 15, he took a formal position at the company, and when he was a 19-year-old UCLA student, he asked his mom, hey, can I take over the official Lisa Frank Instagram account? And she said yes. Within two weeks, Forrest had helped rack up 30,000 followers. And at 24 years old, Forrest Green is now the head of the Lisa Frank brand. Unlike his brother, Forrest tends to be more private. I managed to find one photo of him on his LinkedIn profile. In the few interviews he's given and his LinkedIn posts, I will say he comes across as humble and grateful. He also recognizes his privilege as Lisa's son, but he is determined to make his mom's unachieved goals a reality. I mean, it's kind of fitting that her son would be the one leading the brand into the future. She named her beloved tiger cub character, Forrest, after him. Like, how perfect is that? And because Lisa always tried to keep their private lives private, Forrest told Bustle that having their family affairs out in the public it was pretty painful. But Lisa Frank's life and business are about to become even more public thanks to an upcoming documentary series about the brand. So I saw that last year, a producer from a TV production company was asking around on Reddit if any former Lisa Frank employees would be willing to share their firsthand stories on camera or at least on the record. Dozens of commenters replied saying that they were willing to share their nightmarish tales. So maybe we'll learn more about the enigma that it's Lisa Frank herself. I personally would love to see a film adaptation of this juicy story, you know, maybe with Kristen Wiig or Julianne Moore as Lisa Frank. Directed by Greta Gerwig or maybe Mike White. Because a queen of color should have her story told as boldly and dramatically as her psychedelic dolphins jumping out of rainbow waters. Regardless, I can't wait for that series. What are your thoughts? How do you feel about Lisa Frank? And if you're a former employee, you know, feel free to share your stories with the group.